Welcome back from the break. You're still watching this week and we're reviewing the top stories um, within the outgoing week. Uh, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, also in the week exposed the alleged funding of terrorist activities in Nigeria by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, bandits across the north and other terrorist groups uh, through global crowdfunding online websites and on sports betting platforms, surprisingly, actually. According to the Financial Intelligence Unit, IPOB received funds through affiliates in 22 countries that um, have registered at least 27 entities under the group's name. Now, the NFIU says seven of the registrations were made in the United States, while six were in the United Kingdom. The Finance Security Agency added that over $160,000 raised by IPOP through crowdfunding was funneled to transmission media and broadcasting companies in Bulgaria, South Africa, and the United Kingdom, while also stating that a betting platform simply identified as XC had filed a suspicious transaction report on a 24-year Nigerian customer from the north central part of Nigeria who had received over 350,000 naira in his betting wallet believed to be ransom money from a kidnapping incident. All right, joining us in the studio to take a critical look at the alleged terrorism financing by uh, several terrorist groups, as alleged by the NFIU, is uh, Dr. Undu Ngokulu, who is the managing partner at Next Year Security Consulting. He oversees Next Year Security Peace and Development Focus. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. Thank you. Yeah, so what's your overview about all of this uh, information that the NFIU is uh, bringing to the Nigerian public? Am I surprised? No, I'm not. Mm. I'm not surprised because um, the way both our financial system and our economic system is designed makes stuff like this very easy. For an instance, you might ask how many of our banks do KYC, know your customer? Yeah. How many of them? The way our financial system as well as our political economy is designed in such a way that somebody who sleeps as a poor man wakes up as a rich man. And nobody asks any, nobody will ask any question. All we know is that he has made it. So it becomes easier for people to launder money. Now remember, money laundering and terrorism financing are two different things, but act in the same way. Meaning that I could be laundering money for someone using a bank, and you will see me as a genuine person. Likewise, somebody who is getting money for terrorist group doing exactly what i'm doing the only thing is that you could now say this is money laundering define my as money laundering but because you've done some investigation around the other person you define his own as terrorism financing but they are all like half as six and half a dozen now in countries where things are done very well mm. If you, if a certain of amount of money goes through your account, the bank will flag it. Now, you might see intelligence agencies like the DSS, the police, other state institutions trying to find out how that kind of money came into your account. Do you have the capability to make that kind of money? They all come together. So you find out that what EFCC is doing, if we cannot back it with other other aspect of um, fighting corruption, it will not work. So what we have in our system is a system where NFIU are flagging this. However, there are other areas, like you live here in Abuja, there are a lot of estates in Abuja, nobody knows who owns them. Yeah, I mean, very empty for several years. Yes, nobody knows who owns them. Do you mm -hmm. know whether IPOB, Boko Haram, ISWAP are the ones who own it and they are using it to fund their, 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 their activities. Interesting perspective, actually. So when you look at all this, for you to be able to flag, it's not about flagging, it's about actually flagging and being able to have the political will to go out there and fight. So, and for you to do all these things, you need to start from the basis. The basis is that your banking system should be able to do KYC and do it very well. They should not be able to know their customer. Right? That's on one part. Two, you should have a system where if somebody is a, a level four officer in an organization where he earns 100,000 
a month and he lives in a house of 100 million, how come? The I system mean, should be able to flag it. Of them in Abuja here. I mean, so these are the system. They're paying rent of 5 million euros. Exactly. Per annum so and they, all of they, that. they all come together. So for you to be able to fight money laundering or terrorism financing, you must have an economic system, a financial system that ties together, equally tied to your own social security number. Meaning, he has worked for 10 years and look at what his earnings are. He does not have any other side job. How come he owns this? Interesting perspective. So now let's talk about um, uh, generally how these institutions uh, ought to play within this uh, uh, system. Because if you look at the NFIU and you see the uh, what we already put in place, and then you now juxtapose it. I'm talking about the laws that were put that look, if you're moving anything from $10,000 and all of that abroad, or even transferring one millionaire and above within the domestic system, uh, NFIU should be flagged and all of that. And then you now juxtapose it with what happened with some uh, uh, Nigerians being arrested and tried in the UAE for terrorism financing through Bureau de Change. How do you put it together? Because, I mean, it begs us to believe how those people were able to play around the system uh, through BDCs and all of that. So you, you, you have two countries here, or you have two systems here, or two, two systems operating in two countries. Yeah. One has a developed system where everything works according to book. That's UAE. You have the other system where nothing works through the system. So, for instance, if you are traveling through any of our airports, all they ask you is that, do you have this kind of amount in your mind? And you say no. Even if you may have it hidden somewhere. No one, no one, no one is interested. Rather, right? people are interested in the, in the other aspect, what you have to part, right? So, and when you get into a system where these things work, you find it very difficult. Like, when, if you travel to the UK now, do you know you cannot deposit money into my account? It's not possible. You can't deposit money into my account. If you have to deposit money into my house, you have to put it in your own account and move it into my account. So these are mechanisms states are making to fight issues of terrorism financing. Now, let's, let's be honest about this. This is not a Nigerian issue. This is a global issue. Terrorism financing, financing is a global issue and is a, a security threat around the world. So every country is fighting against it because Nigeria is not the only country with terrorist group. They are all everywhere in the yeah, world. I mean, there are mo so, multiple of them in the Western exactly. world. Exactly. So countries a, day by day are developing measures to reduce their impact, their activities, and they're able to curtail it. But that's where we are suffering. We are suffering because, one, we don't have the political power. Rather, we don't have the, the political, political will. will. Yeah. Because the political will means that for you to make an omelet, you need to break some egg. So meaning that there are my people who either they don't you don't cut the, you don't catch them under terrorism financing you're going to catch them under terror under money, money laundering. laundering. Yeah. So because they tie together, or even you even cut them because they are corrupt. And, so if, they, and if they are members of your political exactly, party, God saves the person. Exactly. So you <laughs> see how they tie. So someone looks at it and say, okay, he has been donating money to our party. You know, if I go this way, it's going to affect members of our party. I'd rather not do it. And I'm, I may be looking for second term. Sure. <laughs> so, so that's why it's... Now, it's difficult because you have, a, you have a country where the systems are not strong. So it's not, it shouldn't be about the president. It should be about the system. In the U.S., we saw how uh, Biden was being tried by the system. Even though his father is a president, it was the system going against him. That's Joe Biden's son. Joe Biden's son. Mm -hmm. Is the system going against the ex-president who was alleged to have declared more than what his asset is in, the, in New York, state of New York, in order to, in order to cut taxes and all that. That's is the Trump. system, mm -hmm. exactly, is the system that is fighting, all not right. the person in power. So if we're able to establish our system where our, DI, um, our DIA, Department for Military Intelligence is working very well. The Nigerian police is working very well. The DSS is working very well. The defense, the defense civil corps is working very well. The Office of the National Security Advisor, least seven of them, including the National uh, um, um, EFCC and the 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 National Intelligence Agency, all working very well. Yeah. And there's a synergy between them. 
it becomes easier to tie this thing around. And where people become, you, you do not like see yourself as, as not just part of the system because the, piece, the system is what determines what or what not. Yeah, not an individual. Not an individual. Uh, no then how it powerful. becomes easier to start solving most of these issues. All right, Dr. Mokolo, uh, as we try to come into this, I want us to go into the meat of this matter. Uh, talk to me about how crowdfunding platforms could actually be used to raise money for terrorists and how sports betting could also be used to raise money for terrorism. I mean, I, I'm just trying to understand how somebody could want to do that when there should be a fear that if you try to pass through this, that you could be caught easily. Okay, so let's take IPOB. IPOB is declared a terrorist group in, here in, in Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. But the next question is, is it the same in the US, in the UK, and, and, and other countries? Or Finland. Or Finland, <laughs> other friends of the con yeah. of Nigeria. That's on one part. Now, if you go to the, U the UK, if you if you google in the, uh, ipob uh, you know indigenous people of is a registered organization meaning they pay dues so what could be regarded as crowdfunding could be dues they've been paying okay so it could actually be maybe terrorism financing quotes from nigeria from nigeria but once it gets view, to uk it's not it's maybe membership dues or so exactly okay so if you if you now look at it now but if you take other organization like iswap which we know is affiliated to um ISIS. isis it becomes a different thing because the globe almost every country apart from maybe even syria sees it as even iran iran sees it as a terrorist group they will fight against it yeah, but because they, their own system actually kicks against has already flagged it hmm. So for us to even do more, we need to push it in that direction. But it now becomes even a fundamental moral issue if how many Nigerians sees IPOB as a terrorist group. Mm. So that needs to be proven. Well, the courts have declared them one. So, but how about the issues of sports betting, which is domestic in nature? I mean, we have lots of sports betting firms, companies, and lots of Nigerians, especially young people, interested. How could terrorists be moving funds through this uh, network? So, a system where you have members who now remember that these things are ideological issues. We are somebody wholly believe that what they are doing is right. They are fighting a just cause. Defining a just cause is different now. So they could have members who are looking for, because they, they, for them, the most terrorism financing is about raising money to support the activities of the group. Yeah. So which could include extortion, which could include kidnapping, which could, could even taxation, which could uh, other forms of, um, you know, curbing up a place and taking over the natural resources in those places and so on and so forth. Now, if they have members who they could move money to and now say, okay, because money is what they are looking. So if they're not getting through membership, they need to get it through other means, you know, which could mean, okay, we, we need to get our members to continue to be on this platform and continue to bet, hoping to win. So they use all these all this kind, of, uh, kind of platforms to... to, to um, to try to raise money. And that's why when I raised the issue of money laundering, imagine a situation where they want to clean their money and they find a businessman and move the money through the businessman who, yeah. who, who may not understand what is going on that he's actually helping terrorists to transfer money or <laughs> so to do it, business. It may be unknowingly. Unknowingly <laughs> he's doing it. <laughs> okay, interested. So these are, these are part of the things, but mm. if you have a system where you're a businessman and your business, your, your, your turnover is about 100,000 a, a year and suddenly you're doing a million and we cannot see how your goods are coming in and going out. We can't see your ledger because how many businesses in Nigeria have ledger, ledger where they, they put what they sold and what they, you know, what they received? No. 
and of course, these terrorists may want to exploit those kind of people, especially people who have merchandise or so. Yes. Selling hundreds of millions yes. in exactly. a day. So exactly. they just come through especially you and say, within, can you help us Within the areas money? where they hold swear, yeah. and that's what they do. Okay, now talk to us. What's the ultimate aim of a terrorist when he or she moves funds through a particular system? What exactly do they intend to do with those funds when they are able to get them off the system, whether through crowdfunding, uh, through sports betting, or other platforms? Two critical things. They need to maintain their activities. And to maintain their activities means they need to pay for... You know, you know, they, do you know, that, do you know terrorist group at times even lend members to another group? There were times that we discovered that ISWAP actually sent some of their members to fight for Azuri in, in, in Kaduna, mm -hmm. and they paid for it. That's Ansaru. Ansaru yeah. in Kaduna, yeah. and they paid for it. So you find out that monies they make, monies they, why they need money is that they need money to sustain their activities. And to sustain these activities, they need that money. And to, they find means of, of getting those funds into their purse just to continue to... Um, Pay their members and as well buy weapons. Mm. So these are the two main two maintain run your activities, which will include buying weapons and maintaining um, your membership. Yeah, and people pay, who and are paying joined, salaries. Paying salaries. Because exactly. I remember there was a time in the north when people preferred to. I mean, in the uh, notice, people were going to go and enroll into these terrorist groups so, because they were paying well, paying exactly. more than the government. So let's 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 be practical here. If you're a young man. You can't end in even. You don't even know if you in the next start three months if you're going to see ten thousand naira, and people are offering you ten hundred thousand a month. You must be either a good Christian, or a good Muslim, not accept it, <laughs> or a patriot. Actually. Or a patriot, not accept it. <laughs> All so. right, as we try to round off the conversation, talk to me as to what we could do with this sort of information. The Office of the National Security Advisor, UNSA, is declaring house for this kind of information, what should they be doing to prevent movement of terrorist financing through, you know, whether crowdfunding, sports betting, or other means? What should be the checks we should put in place to prevent uh, this loophole? First, I think we need to look ourselves in the face and say, what's the political way to want to do it? Hmm. Once we get that right, the political way must be there. We don't want to know who is going to affect, but the political way must be there to tackle it. If we get there, the political will cascade down to how we work with the banks. KYC must be activated. Banks must know their customers. Yeah, I thought the CBN had given them that as a guideline. But uh, to, to what extent do they implement that? That's the, the next question. That is very important too. There should be a synergy between all these our intelligence, security, intelligence and security organizations. They must work together. And, and three, the loophole between money laundering and terrorism financing must be closed. And closing it means that we need to look ourselves in the face and ask ourselves, the problem with our corruption culture, how do we deal with it? To allow the loopholes to be covered, we need to deal with issue of corruption. Because we are looking at sports betting, we are looking at crowdfunding, we are not even looking at estates where people are pushing money into and nobody knows who owns them. So these are these are these are if you if you work on that, yes, I, I love some of the legislations that are coming up. But this is that the legislation does not work alone. It does not work in isolation. The legislation must be implemented by people. And once you're able to do this, is another way. And then fifth, and which I think is very critical, there are some of issues that we look at and we've been fighting against them using kinetic approach. But okay. these are non-kinetic approach that will bring down the tempo in the country. And I will keep saying it. Some of the issues that we have, conflict issues, insecurity, are issues of exclusion, marginalization, and so on. And, and most of these issues can be dealt with politically. Right. It will bring down the tempo. We will start reconciling differences. And it will help us to know which ones that we cannot fight and find another alternative means of fighting them. 
And then, of course, I expected you to add that of the political parties. When you have big donors, <laughs> I mean, sending them monies when they can't explain their source of wealth, should the political parties uh, be accepting those monies or shouldn't they cooperate with security agencies to say, look, we've been receiving some funding from this person and we don't know what exactly he's looking for? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's very funny that after our 2023 election, I, I, I've not seen any of the parties declare how much they spent, how much they receive, and how much they spent. Well, and except they, maybe for one of the candidates, uh, Peter Obi, but not the party. But not the party. Uh, that was yeah. how much he spent for his own election. So these things are very critical, you know? And I think if we have a good system where most of these things are, are logged in, and then especially our national identification should be flat. You know, we have name, we have all sort of ones, yeah, and the new one is even coming they, they up. They say there's a new one that's coming, coming up. up. So these things should work very well, mm. you know. You travel abroad, you see the way it works. I was a student in Belgium. The, the first time my elder brother sent me money from the U.S., the money was stopped. <laughs> so you may even see it, but you can't withdraw. I, I couldn't withdraw it, but the bank said, I now went to, I said, this is for my, he gave me all my upkeep and so on. You know, so, but that's the way the system work. All right. So how do we ensure that our uh, institutions also partner with their uh, international, uh, with other countries, uh, uh, quickly to be able to see how we harness the advantages that come with uh, international networking? First, we need to show we, we need to show that we are ready to work. For instance, the period um, I, the uh, UAE made that declaration. We never attacked until this year. And if I'm a partner and I gave you such intelligence, you never acted, why would mm -hmm. I give you again? That's about funding through BDC. Exactly. And all of that. So these are the kind of things. And when we hear such a thing, it, it's not good to rush to start acting. We take our time, do our own investigation. But the need to act is very important. And most importantly, as much as we, 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 we can, there are information that you keep because they are, you need to keep them, you don't need to share them. But the ones that are not non-essential that the citizens should know, All right. please, they should be shared because what you're doing is that you're using that to raise the confidence of the people that the state is actually working. working. Because if you lose trust of your people, you can't get things work. All right, we must thank you so much, Dr. Ndu Wokolo, is a managing partner at Next Year. He oversees uh, Next Year Security, Peace, and Development Focus. We must thank you so much for your immense wealth of knowledge, and we hope to have you here some other time to help us understand. Well, just before we go, the Nigerian government owes every Nigerian the opportunity to live in a country that is trustworthy, that our systems work, and uh, of course, that uh, we will ensure that we are trusted by international uh, partners too abroad. And of course, for those who are funding terrorism, well, the law will soon catch up with you because uh, there's been no benefit to the country and of course, it keeps dragging us down.